Hi guys, this is FFAN16 and welcome to my Kingdom Hearts 3 TGS 2018 Toy Box and Frozen Gameplay Overview. They had showcased some gameplay for Toy Story and Frozen over the weekend at TGS. And this is kind of some of their gameplay that they were showing. As you can see that the presenters there are playing. And we get to see how vast and beautiful Kingdom Hearts 3 is actually looking. Right now we're at the toy store within uh, Kingdom Hearts 3's Toy Story World. And just being as small as a toy here and wandering around this toy store, it looks absolutely gorgeous and huge. Not only do we utilize absolutely everything we've had in Kingdom Hearts up to this point with flow motion and uh, mechanics, as you can see, it's very floaty. You got shot lock, you've got um, keyblade transformations, which kind of works the same as Birth by Sleep's finishing moves. But everything looks absolutely great and gorgeous gorgeous and just absolutely huge. I can't wait to start exploring. As you can see here that the Heartless are actually taking control of a lot of the toys within this toy store and Sora has to go about fighting them. He can use the flow rides as we've seen. This is the pirate ship kind of a little bit more tweaked and better looking than we first saw it all those years ago. It's looking absolutely gorgeous, guys. I can't wait to play. And as Sora defeats some of these mech-type toys, he can actually take control of them, as you can see here, and ride them around and use them to help fight within this area. This toy store looks absolutely huge, and I can't wait to go exploring you could even just go to different shops. Each shop, so you can see the Heartless are just taking over absolutely every toy they can. This thing looks absolutely ferocious. The, the dark smoke that's coming out of it tells you that it is kind of unquote quote possessed by the heartless and its movements even looks very stiff like a toy would be um, not very fluid for those poor heartless that have taken control of it now here Sora has taken over another mech and what a better and easier way to fight a larger enemy than with a mech to use the firepower that it possesses of course you could leave this at any time and just fight old school or just go hard until the mech either loses power or HP. Now another cool feature here is not only can you run up walls, but you can find vents to use to be able to traverse through the different areas within the toy store. These vents look actually quite nice and as you can see there was a flashlight there. Within the vents there are Heartless to fight. We got some classic looking goodies there for Heartless. Oh, did you see that shadow just fall over on its side? That was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Looks like there's a security system here and if you're quick enough, uh, you don't want to get hit by the propellers in that vent as I bet you it could do damage to your, your party members. You can continue on to the next floor area here, which looks like this is now the, we were in the boys section, now we're in the girls section of the toy store. And it's just amazing how much the Heartless like to take over the stuffed animals and all the toys that they can. I'm noticing that we do have some new style Heartlesses to look forward to. Uh, fighting within these worlds which is absolutely great I like it when they come up with new designs and they're taking over the the big plushies those look like they have the same attack as your dream eater would from dream drop distance and Sora's just going hard with kicking some behind here you guys, I'm really getting excited with the gameplay that they're showing here. Everything's starting to come together really nicely here for Kingdom Hearts 3. It looks very enjoyable, huge. The Heartless look like they're a little bit more intuitive. A lot more AoEs I've noticed between the different type of Heartless. And yeah, and then you got these elements of the stuff around in the real world kind of getting in your way and you kind of just push it. Now everything looks to be almost interactive. You can run up walls, you can run up toys, even just the, some of the displays here. There's this orchestra that you can run into and if you go to the player there and start running on the wheel or the record, the orchestra will start playing. Now there is a cutscene here and I did take it away if you do want to see that. Go check out these guys video. 
but um, you're gonna go off and Woody is currently running on it so that it can keep going so you could check out this little dude he's got something stuck in his instrument but as soon as Woody gets off of course the orchestra stops playing and you can continue on and look around to see what else is going on at this area now you're gonna see a shaking dollhouse this is gonna get us close to that boss fight for the end of this section and let me tell you this boss fight is a little freaky now if anybody ever played Final Fantasy 14 and got to that dungeon with the dolls you're gonna have some post-traumatic stress disorder looking at this so be aware there's an angry doll possessed by the heartless now attacking Zora as the boss fight and this fight looks absolutely nuts and fun to play she's got some killer moves She's got some AoEs, she's got some mainline attacks that you just want to dodge. And this person's using his full arsenal against this doll boss, and she looks freaky, like she's gonna give some kids some nightmares, but uh, hey, she looks great, the mechanics look awesome, she's a little floaty, she looks like she's being played with strings, but of course the Heartless have possessed her. So this now section that we're getting into is the Frozen gameplay that they had right after the Toy Story. Looks like we're doing the bit of the Trinity sled here with Donald, Goofy, and Sora. Getting away from these Dragon Heartless that are chasing us, they're beaming lasers at us, and an avalanche is now following us as well. If you notice when you watch her dodging, when she gets hit by a laser, it actually slows her down. Now, I'm assuming that if they get hit enough, or she gets hit enough as Zora Donald Goofy, the avalanche is actually going to take over and you'll have to start again. Also, if you get hit by one of the ground dragons, that's probably going to slow you down as well. Definitely going to have to watch the walls, the, the different elements chasing you, and the lightning, or the uh, laser beams, sorry, not lightning beams. And just keep going down the hill and hopefully you don't get swallowed up by that avalanche. Now once you do finally make it down safely or as safe as you can, you're going to start a mini game here that's going to start really quickly here. Just want to kind of show you more of this sled. I don't know if you want to call it a boss fight yet, but you're definitely running from some major baddies here. It looks pretty good. It looks like Goofy is steering by pushing Donald and Sora back and forth to the direction that he wants the sled to go. I really think Donald and Sora don't have any option but what Goofy's telling them to do right here, guys. Alright, jumping down here, you're gonna do a deep dive and this is going to start the mini game. and OMG, the goods you can collect while sliding down this mountain is absolutely nuts. And here comes Sora for the landing and it's a 10 pointer, guys. <laughs> So as you guys notice, as we make the way down the hill here, not only do we have a booster that you can notice the green arrows on the snow to help you and it shows you your way, there is a hell of a lot of money for you to pick up. Now the red orbs, I'm still not 100% sure what they do. Maybe they fill one of your drive gauges. But uh, OMG the money, I sure hope there is some really good shops, some really good items that you can get and if you're ever short on money in the game, that you could come back here and run this mini game as much as possible and it still has this much money to collect. Now, it might be 5 money, 10 money, short denominations, but look at how many there is. There is not a want for it and look, you're even deep diving into some money there. Um, it would be really nice to see once you do come back to this, not inside this boss fight, if you could start accumulating like a score, and if that score could go then to a, like a leaderboard that would go online, or a personal best, then you can earn a trophy, or some sort of reward in the game for running this multiple times at a better time rate, maybe a better collection of items or money or goods while you're running it, and the more you collect, the better your score will be. So we're gonna make the way down here. It looks like there's several paths that you could go to, and it looks huge, guys. Like, it just doesn't look like you're going down a hallway. There's choices, there's selections as to the path that you wanna take. 
Now, as you reach the bottom here, the three dragons have caught up to her and they're ready for a fight. And these guys look like they're going to be a beast to handle. They got wind attacks, they got ice attacks, and they not only attack in the aerial, but they also attack from the ground. And I don't show you the whole fight here. I do cut to the three dragons to one. But handling all three to begin with is probably going to be quite the juggle, but then once you get it down to one here, as you're going to notice shortly, it's going to be a little bit easier to manage. Now, she's using a lot of her arsenal as well. She's using some Keyblade transformation here to help hit multiple targets. And I'm really noticing that it says standby when it's trying to bring up or format the Keyblade transformation. That's probably like a wait system and then it goes back to active time battle. Now once the dragon becomes one, one dragon available to fight, it's going to go into the ground and start doing a ground attack, kind of like a drill. And there she goes, she beats it. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little synopsis here of this gameplay. Like, sub, leave a comment, and as always guys, happy gaming!